Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the new link methods introduced in .NET 9 and compare them to how we did things in previous versions of .NET. Let's get started. So, what are the new link methods in .NET 9? The .NET team has added three new link methods, countBy, aggregateBy, and index. We'll see how these methods simplify our code compared to older approaches. I have set up a .NET 9 console application and created a product sale record with product and quantity. I've also set up a list of product sales. Now let's see how we used to handle this data in older versions of .NET to count the number of sales for each product. Before .NET 9, if you wanted to count elements by a specific key, you'd use group by and select. Here, I'm going to group the sales data by product and count the number of sales for each product. To do this, I'll use the group by method to group the sales based on the product property. Then I use the select method to create a new object for each group. This new object will have two properties, product, which is the name of the product, and count, which is the number of sales for that product. Now let's iterate through the grouped and counted sales data to display the results. We'll use a for each loop to go through each item in sales count by product and print out the product name along with its sales count. Let's run the application and see the results. We have two sales for the laptop, and one sales for the smartphone, and one sale for the tablet. Now let's see how much easier it is with the new count by method. Count by method allows you to group elements by a selector function and return an enumeration of key value pairs, where the key is the object and the value is the count of elements in the group. Now let's display the products and their sales. Let's run the application again. Here you can see the output. Two sales for the laptop, one sales for the smartphone, and one sale for the tablet. With .NET 9, it's much simpler with count by. Before we go to the aggregate by method, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated on .NET tutorials. Next up is the aggregate by method. Before .NET 9, if you wanted to get the total quantity by product, you typically group the sales data by product and then select the product along with the total quantity. This involves calculating the sum of quantities for each product group. Now let's display the results. Loop through each item in total quantity by product and print out the product name along with its total quantity. Let's run the application. We have laptop total quantity is 7 and smartphone quantity is 12, and tablet quantity is 4. Now let's try this using the aggregate by method. This method allows us to group the sales data by product and aggregate the total quantity seamlessly. Here's how it works. With aggregate by, we define a key to group by which in this case is the product. Then we specify an initial value seed for our aggregation and a function that defines how we want to aggregate the quantities. For each sale in the group, we add the quantity to our running total. Display the results by looping through total quantity by product. Here, each item's key is the product, and the value is the total quantity. Let's run the application and see. Now we can see the same results. Laptop total quantity is 7, smartphone quantity is 12, and tablet quantity is 4. Finally, let's talk about the index method. Before .NET 9, if you needed to work with both items and their indexes in a collection, you typically use the select method with an index parameter. This way, you could transform each element into a new form that includes its original value along with its index. This select method takes a projection function with two parameters, item, the current element, and index, the position of the element in the collection. It returns a new collection of tuples, where each tuple consists of the original element and its index. In here, each tuple would contain a sale and its corresponding index. Let's display the results by looping through sales with lines and printing the index of each entry along with the item itself. Let's run the application. You can see it printed with the line number and the corresponding product sale item as expected. Now let's try this using the index method. Index method makes it possible to quickly extract the implicit index of an enumerable and return a result that incorporates each element's index into a tuple. Let's run the application. 
You can see the same results with the index method, including the line number and the corresponding product sale item. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do you have any questions or need more examples? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more .NET content. See you next time. Happy coding!